but you did mention maybe giving parents real um, strategies for how to connect to their own worry before trying to uh, facilitate one of these conversations. So I just want to open that back up to you guys. So I think, you know, just sort of general tips for dealing with uncertainty, right? You know, some of the things that we always look at is that um, there's thoughts and behaviors, right? Like we can have an impact on our thoughts and we can have an impact on our behaviors. And the way we impact our thoughts really are to be a little bit more mindful about what's happening in the here and now, trying not to be in the past, trying not to worry too, too much about the future. We really focus on the here and now. We've said this a little bit earlier about why egocentric children are a little bit protected from anxiety developmentally because they are very much in the here and now. So as adults, it's very important to practice mindfulness. So we always say mindfully be in your, your day, in your presence, in your room, whatever it is. I think that that's a really important thing. Um, and that might just mean, you know, just to be very concrete about this, because I think that can sometimes be helpful. That might mean like listening to your middle schooler tell a joke, right? And really being there when they do it and enjoying that moment and the laughing and, you know, sort of like, that kind of thing, or, you know, listen to listening to your kindergartner or learn how to read, you know, it's really like the, the small things that keep us grounded and mindful in each moment, moment to moment. Um, a lot of, you know, we recommend a lot of people use mantras, you know, and I think that might sound kind of silly to some people, but it really, I think we all do them actually a little bit subconsciously. So like really making them a little bit more active can be helpful saying, you know, I know I can handle this. I've done this before, you know, um, it could be worse or I have, I'm lucky to have, here are the supports I have and sort of like having a couple of things that you proactively maybe even write down so that you can revisit and, you know, make sure that you're mindful on those types of things. Um, in terms of behaviors, you know, it, it's always about being very conscientious to do things like get out in nature. It's you know, taking a walk. It's not just like we say, take a walk because it's, you know, that's just, what, you know, it's a way to get out of the house, being in nature, being breathing air, being outside, being around um, animals and sounds and, you know, is actually really soothing and research actually backs us up on that. Um, we can do a lot of other activities like um, watching our favorite show or if, you know, watching a funny movie really to activate some of the other parts of our brain, our limbic system that's, that have been, you know, our parasympathetic nervous system, which helps soothe us to be able to tap into that when we haven't, we're sort of on overdrive of this more, you know, sort of anxious state. Um, those are some of the things. And I think one of the, and then I'll see if Sarah has anything to add, but I think my other thing that I'm, I'm seeing a lot is that, you know, in, in all of this uncertainty with the schools, you know, and COVID and all these different things, I feel people are really exhausted and anxious on making like moment to moment decisions all the time, right? Like there's a lot of like, do, does my child go on this play date? Do I do this? Do I go to this indoor place? You know, or, you know, whatever it is, do I send my kid to school today? You know, and I, and I think um, part of what helps with that is taking an inventory of, you know, like being more, again, purposeful and mindful about how you approach this, having a bit of a framework. It, of course, having to be flexible about that, but, but you know, taking an inventory of like, okay, what do we have going on? And what's our general philosophy? And can we like land on some of these philosophies and then let's just follow it. You know, we're going to try to follow it to the best of our abilities instead of making game. I mean, obviously this is an ever changing ecosystem, right? But, you know, really if we're more mindful about um, having a framework for our actions and our decisions, it can take the stress out of this, like, you know, making a decision on every move and every play. One thing I would add when we're talking about regulating our own anxiety is so kind of like Emily mentioned the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And I was talking a little bit earlier when I was talking about child anxiety that like anxiety is a natural response in our body to a perceived threat. Like it is an arousal state that's meant to keep us safe, right? We need to be able to have a big reaction if there's a tiger like staring at us. We need to be able to activate that fight fight or freeze part of ourselves, the sympathetic nervous system to keep ourselves safe. So the anxiety in of itself is something that is actually protective. If we want to, if it's a false alarm though, if that's not actually a tiger or if, you know, we, we don't want to be sitting there in this sort of heightened state of like panic all the time, 
We want to be able to turn it off. We want to get into our parasympathetic arousal system, our, our, the down regulator to our up regulator. Um, and so things that we, so not, so yes, our thinking is important and our behaviors are important, but also our body is important and using whatever skills that work for you to help calm your body down, whether it's taking deep breaths, whether it's going out in nature, like Emily was saying, whether it's, um, talking connect human connection, um, creates a sense of safety, which helps bring us back into that, um, regulated state. Um, a hate, like literally just a bare hand on your chest, that skin to skin contact. Like you remember we had our babies in the hospital and they all told us to like do skin to skin contact to help your body or your baby, like regulate their breathing and their body temperature. That's because skin to skin is regulating. Um, that's parasympathetic arousal. Um, we want, we can just do that by putting a hand on our chest and saying, I'm having a hard time right now. Okay, I can do this. I can, I can figure out what I need to do next, one step at a time. So that's staying in the moment. It's grounding yourself. It's trying to regulate your nervous system. That can all help us move out of that sort of anxious arousal state. So these are all things that you kind of got to figure out what works for you. Because if it doesn't resonate with you, it's not going to work. Exactly. Um, but you have to kind of figure out like, what calms me. Sometimes a grounding exercise, and I teach this to my patients all the time, where like, you literally just feel the earth under your feet holding you up and you feel the weight of gravity kind of holding you down. Like that, like, or even just checking in with all five senses, right? What do I smell? What do I see? What do I hear? What do I taste? What do I touch in this very moment? That alone can move us out of an anxious uh, physiological okay. response. So these are all things you can try. These are things you can do with your kids to help that. These are things you can teach your kids to do to help them calm down, calm their bodies down. Um, so that was just a, one thing I wanted to add about the body stuff. Totally. And, and I always, I call those the physiological interventions, <laughs> but it is, it's like, it's what, before we can even get to the thinking, right? Because we're in that emergency brain, non-thinking state. We have to do something in our bodies. Even I have little kids do jumping jacks, burpees, you know, just to get <laughs> literally just, you know, right in that moment, 10 seconds, go, you know, um, so that they can sort of regulate, you know, down that actually like upregulating allows you to downregulate. So some of yep. those, again, counterintuitive moves, <laughs> but it is, it is some of that physical, um, I totally agree. It's some of those physical interventions that can be our first line. Yeah, and that's a very good point, Emily, that you that upregulating can be down. Think of it like a defibrillator where it's like, you know, that quick charge actually can like reset things. So if you're having like a panic attack or you're feeling like incredibly, you know, anxious sometime and like you're just like breathing is not gonna cut it for me, or like a grounding, like something calming isn't really gonna work. Um, you can do like quick activation things like um some people will like snap a rubber band on their wrist um or put their hands or their face in ice water um or even just hold an ice cube because that intense sensation that really like hit of like intense sensory input can like kind reset. of reset yes exactly so those are also things especially with like kids who you know getting them to do something calming and relaxing is not in reach. <laughs> like you have a mm -hmm. young kid who isn't going to just like sit and do a grounding exercise with you, <laughs> getting them to move their body. Like let's do a big dance party before we get ready for bed. I do that a lot with my young kids. Um, I actually find that having like, I think there's a myth that like, we're not supposed to have like anything exciting or active happen at bedtime because they won't go to sleep. But in fact, I actually, and this is true for big kids too, like a quick burst of energy before getting ready for bed actually, I think helps reset that nervous system. So like pillow jumps or rolling my kids up like burritos. This is great for like mm -hmm. kindergartners and first grade, like little younger kids, like sensory rich, sensory input rich stuff. Um, like swinging them or doing dips where their like head goes below their heart that all that proprioceptive that's like I don't know if that's that's kind of getting technical but like <laughs> we call it proprioceptive input 
that's all very regulating. And so there are things that we can do as grownups um, and there are things that we can do with our kids that helps to just regulate that nervous system. And that I think, can, that can, don't underestimate how helpful that could be. 